Hi, everybody. I'm Pierre Bouvard, Chief Insights Officer here at Cumulus Media in Westwood One. And who performs better when you do a neurological study of TV and radio programming and TV and radio commercials? Today, we're going to share with you an exciting new study from a company called Media Probe. And they conducted a neuro study of TV and radio programming along with TV and radio commercials. Now, why do you need to neurologically study advertising and media? Why can't you just ask consumers um, what they think of advertising? Well, the reality is that unconscious reactions is really gets you to the heart of what consumers really feel about media and advertising. David Ogilvy, the legendary advertising guru, said consumers don't think how they feel, they don't say what they think, and they don't do what they say. In his fantastic book, Rory Sutherland, the vice chairman of Ogilvy, his book is uh, Alchemy, the Dark Art and Curious Science, of creative magic in brands, business, and life. He said, in the words of Jonathan Haidt, the conscious mind thinks it's the Oval Office when in reality, it's the press office. And what he means by that is, we think we're issuing, issuing executive orders and rationally making decisions, when most of the time, we're actually constructing post rationalizations to use logic to explain decisions that we made emotionally. Sutherland says that because we use reason to explain our actions in the past, doesn't mean that we actually used reason in the first place. In their book, System One, Unlocking Profitable Growth, John Kieran, Orlando Wood, and Tom Ewing, from the creative testing company, System One, they say, we think much less than we think we think. In other words, emotion is what guides and simplifies decision-making. If something makes us feel happy, it's probably a good option. And so that's really where Media Probe comes in. They have a sensor that consumers slip over their hand as they're exposed to media in their home. And this sensor measures something called electrodermal activity, which is second by second engagement, which is measuring the sweat and heart rate of the consumer. Media Probe generates an emotional impact score of media and advertising synced second by second to what consumers were being exposed to. So panelists get the sensors in the mail, they download an app, they're assigned uh, certain media to listen or to watch, and Media Probe has a panel of 3,500 Americans. Now, not only are they capturing the unconscious reactions with their uh, meter in essence, but they're also asking consumers explicitly to uh, use a dial to indicate their feelings to uh, media content, and they also uh, conduct surveys. So for this study, Media Probe analyzed four different radio programming formats that consumers uh, listen to. Each broadcast consisted of a 30 minute show. There were four different genres that were provided to consumers, urban, news, adult contemporary pop, and rock and oldies. 36 ads were tested. Each 30 minute show had three commercial breaks with three ads in each uh, program. And consumers were asked to listen to three of the four genres and every ad in the study was exposed to 225 people. So let's get right to it. The first startling finding is when you look at TV programming and the emotional impact score and radio programming and its emotional impact score, radio performs 13% better in the media probe emotional impact score. And this is startling because we've all been trained in advertising that sight, sound, and motion is inherently superior to audio. Well, that's actually not the case. So audio actually more engaging 
than TV programming generating a higher emotional impact score. Now, what about the ads? Well, when Media Probe tested the ad breaks in both TV and radio, radio outperformed TV by 12%. That is a head snapper. Now, to the left of your screen, we're looking at the emotional impact score for radio programming and radio advertising. And interestingly, radio commercials actually outperform radio programming by 4% in the emotional impact score. Uh, so ads are not as satanic or demonic as we had previously suspected in the radio industry. In the TV world, there's really no difference in the emotional impact score between TV content and TV ads. Now, on an individual ad basis, radio again outperformed TV by 5%. So think about it. You have radio ads without sight, sound, and motion performing as good or better on average by 5% than TV ads with a cost per thousand that is one-fifth of a TV ad. Now, this brand new study from Media Probe validates a big giant study that was published last year and uh, written about in this big Ad Age article. This was an attentiveness study conducted by the ad giant Dentsu. They had hired a company called Lumen, which measures attentiveness. And the key finding from Lumen was that audio ads outperform video ads for attention and brand recall. So now we have another major, totally separate study validating the Dentsu Lumen findings. Media Probe looked at programming genres and they found of all the various genres in radio, the one that has the highest emotional impact score is news, AM, FM news. In fact, radio news outperformed TV news by 14% and radio news outperformed the overall radio programming average by 8%. So news programming is definitely a very strong context for marketers ads. Now, they also did, Media Probe also did an analysis looking at the relationship between programming and context. And what they found, especially on spoken word formats, that ads with music, jingles, had that had a very kind of different context versus the programming, did very, very well. So, creative best practice on a spoken word station, don't have a plain ad with just a, a voice, have music, have jingles, create that uh, contrast. Now, Media Probe also did something called a reg uh, regression analysis to isolate the best performing creative elements. They found female voiceovers perform very well, jingles, music, and five brand mentions. And that five brand mentions is something that has been validated time and time again by Nielsen. They have conducted thousands of brand effect studies for audio, and they find that the more brand mentions in an ad and the earlier the brand mention, you get stronger familiarity, brand affinity, and likelihood to take an action. So, the key findings from this historic media probe study. Despite the fact that radio lacks sight, sound, and motion, AM, FM radio programming outperformed TV with their emotional engagement score by 13%, and radio advertising also outperformed TV advertising by 12%. And this is a major validation to that recently released Dentsu Lumen attentiveness study, which showed that audio ads outperform video for attention and brand recall. AM FM news was the most impactive, uh, impactful genre outperforming uh, TV news by 14% and outperforming the AM FM programming average by about 8%. And the contrast between an ad break and programming is especially impactful. So best practice for a spoken word genre Ads should have music, jingles, and have a strong contrast to the programming that creates a lot of effectiveness. And then on best practices, the regression analysis from Media Probe, female voiceovers, jingles, music, and brand early and often, five brand mentions.
The audio active group here at Cumulus Media and Westwood One is a full service national brand advisory offering audio creative best practices, media planning, a strategic allocation within audio, as well as measurement. And we conduct measurement studies for the entire audio campaign, measuring brand effect, sales lift, uh, site and search attribution, as well as creative effectiveness. Each week we publish a new audio insight. You can find it on our blog at cumulusmedia.com or westwood1.com. And when you're there, you can sign up to get our weekly audio insight sent directly to your email each and every week. Thanks so much for the opportunity to review with you a brand new significant study from Media Probe on the emotional engagement of radio advertising and radio content versus TV. Thanks so much.